Hey there. Hey guys. Ugh. Wouldn't you know it. I mean, I'm still kicking myself that after all these years, I still have yet to do a full-on Kingdom Hearts series review, marathon, or like, much of Kingdom Hearts anything. Me! I mean, it's, it's crazy because I want to express right here and now, Kingdom Hearts is one of those franchises that is very near and dear to my heart. No pun intended. I mean, I've been around this series since its original inception back in 2002, and my god, it's incredible to see that after pretty much 20 long years, the series is still going strong with no sign of losing its momentum. And I gotta admit, it's one of those things that I can actively look forward to every time a new one is coming out. It, it's truly a great experience. Which brings us to the newest game in the series, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. Now, interestingly, I do feel more comfortable reviewing this game as a standalone because I don't feel like I need to climb my way up the ladder of Kingdom Hearts reviews to explain it. And that'll make sense as we dive into it. So let's do just that. Without further ado, this is Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. I'm William Morris. Welcome to the Brotherhood of Gaming. Let's talk Kingdom Hearts. So, it's been less than a year since Kingdom Hearts 3's Remind DLC edition was released, which was essentially the final mix add-on that added all the super bosses and extra story endings. As a whole, Kingdom Hearts 3 was the conclusion of the Xehanort Saga, aka Phase 1. That not only closed some doors and answered some questions, but equally opened up many more doors and more questions that were to be explored in future games, which would become Phase 2. And it all starts right here with Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. Sort of. Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory is what I would like to call the perfect side game and a bridge between the old and the new. But more than that, actually, as brought out by the series head mastermind Tetsuya Nomura, what Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory truly is, is a celebration of one element of video games that's more often than not taken for granted. And that's the beautiful music that accompanies them. Yoko Shimomura, from the very first game all the way up until now, has been the lead music creator for the entire Kingdom Hearts franchise, and it's no question that her work has been legendary, as this video game series has some of the most emotional and banging hot soundtracks in the gaming industry. The music has even been performed live many times via a traveling Kingdom Hearts orchestra concert. Hey, if that doesn't speak volumes, I don't know what does. So with all that, it was only a matter of time that Kingdom Hearts would finally give us a musical rhythm-based game, and here it is. Much to the delight and demand of Yoko herself, and probably a handful of fans. While an entry like this may seem surprising, it's actually not uncharacteristic of the Kingdom Hearts franchise to have a game like this. There's been plenty of games that have dabbled in different playstyles, so when the concept of this game was made public, many of us were probably like, well, yes, of course. But I'm sure there were plenty of others that were weirded out by the idea and had several concerns. Oh, my kingdom hearts. Ruined. Like, is this game good? Is the game gonna be canon? Does it even have a story? Do I have to play this game? Does Kyrie do something? And is the game worth the full price? All very valid questions, so before we jump into the spoiler territory, I will just come out and answer some of the big ones now. Is Melody of Memory a good game? Yes. I feel like this question coincides with the next one, so I'll, I'll combine the two and sort of answer it towards the end. Is the game worth the full price? Which, at the time of this review, is about $60. Well, that all really depends. This is by no means your standard Kingdom Hearts fare. There's no action-adventure RPG leveling up in this one. This game is all about the music. And from the word go, you will be immediately thrust into the game where, like Guitar Hero or Elite Beat Agents before, you will be hitting the corresponding buttons on your controller to some of the franchise's most highlighted musical pieces. When you walk away, you don't hear me say, please, oh baby, don't go. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. If you have no nostalgic value for the music, or if you aren't a fan of rhythm-based games to begin with, there's a reasonable chance you probably won't be that into it. 
That being said, there is an available demo for free you can get on the eShop, Live, or PlayStation Network, so you can definitely feel free to give it a shot for yourself to be sure. Now, as a Kingdom Hearts fan, do you need to play this one? This question gets asked because there has been no Kingdom Hearts game, mainstream or otherwise, that hasn't been important to the overall narrative at some point, in a big, bold way. Every game is important and brings something new to the story. Melody of Memory is no different, but thankfully the folks at Square figured that this one could potentially be more alienating, so they made sure that while yes, this game does have important post-Kingdom Hearts 3 story significance, leading the franchise into Phase 2, it's all in the very final part of the game. There's about 20 minutes of new content in the climax, so if you don't want to miss out, you could easily just watch an uploaded video of the final part of the game, and you would get all the relevant information you needed in order to be caught up. So no, you don't need to play this game if you don't want to. Now, should you? Okay guys, this is the part where I'm gonna go into the story and talk about everything this game has and my overall opinion on it, so spoilers from here on. However, if you wanna skip the part where I talk about the story, then you can just go ahead and click the timestamp below. All right, got it? And here we go. Melody of Memory is a very simple game, but keep in mind, simple and easy are two different things. At the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, Sora had vanished into a world we didn't know, meeting another person named Yozora. And holy fuck, this guy makes a hell of a first impression, Ariel, help! Kairi and Riku set off to look for Sora, but their traces came up cold. Kairi decides that maybe she holds the key to finding him, so she goes to their friends in Radiant Garden, who use their science to send Kairi into a deep slumber where she can search her memories for any clue as to where he might be. Melody of Memory just opens up right away with you as the famous Kingdom Hearts cast reliving the memories through music, with Kairi occasionally giving the player a small recap of the events that transpired over the course of the series. Because of this, the entire game is mostly just a glorified, yet grossly simplified summary of the series' highlighted moments. As I wished for that strength, something incredible happened. Hoping that we would never be separated again, I gave Sora my lucky charm. I know some would probably be wondering if this game could, because of this, be used as a quick and easy means to get a new fan caught up to speed. Because it's kinda initially what I was thinking too before even playing the game. But my honest and firm answer is no. Kairi does, like I said, explain some of the highlighted moments that happened within the series, but the amount of details and other events that transpired during all those moments are not brought up. And being that Kairi wasn't personally there to witness most of it, it makes sense that those details would be absent. If nothing else, it's more of a small recap for fans who've already lived through those games and serves to be a small refresher course. The ending has Kairi facing off against her memory of Master Xehanort, who, as it turns out, has been pretty much the root of all Kairi's suffering as far back as she can remember. Quite literally, as he's the reason she can't remember her past prior to when she arrived on Destiny Islands as explained in Kingdom Hearts 1. That is one aspect about the storytelling in this franchise that I absolutely love and just can't wait to see happen more and more. That after about 20 years, with this series continuing to grow and evolve, it still manages to come full circle and tie itself to the original game that came out in 2002. That sort of intelligent planning just really brings a smile to my face. A anyway, Xehanort drops some words of wisdom on Kairi to help enlighten her as to what she must do next, yet in true Nomura fashion, it's as vague as possible and almost no help at all. If you arrive in a world that's neither of light nor darkness, but somewhere on the other side, your task will be far from easy. That is the answer I have for you. What does it mean, Namura? What does it mean? I swear to God, you're doing this on purpose. What does that mean? Kyrie regales everybody about what happened and they're all just as confused as we are and can only make an educated guess on what it could mean. Even contemplating multiverse theory with worlds that are fictitious. Oh boy. Well, with no leads, the fairy godmother suddenly appears with a plausible clue. She takes Riku and Kyrie to the final world or limbo where they find the soul of a woman who none of us have really come to know yet, 
but we sort of met very briefly as Sora when he was here in Kingdom Hearts 3. The fairy godmother believes that this unknown woman can help lead them to Sora. Riku tells them of the dreams that he's been having about Sora being surrounded by skyscrapers, and our mystery girl here believes it to be a place called Quadrata, which, when translated, means square. Oh my god, Square Enix World's confirmed! Squee! Oh, uh, sorry. Riku goes on alone because reasons. Kairi decides to resume her training under Master Aqua, which, oh my god, that is awesome! Squee! Sorry, sorry, I won't keep doing that. Um, and it just ends with Yen Sid saying that the group should begin their new adventures next time in the ancient city of Scala Ad Kalem, which we found out was Daybreak Town from the freaking phone game. <laughs> God damn it. Personally, I think this being the only new addition to the story is perfectly fine. Being a rhythm-based game, I don't think most were expecting much more beyond that or anything at all, but knowing Nomura and how these games work, there was bound to be something because as I've said, no Kingdom Hearts game has ever not been important in some way, shape or form. As for the story that is here, as always, it has me by the balls. I'm intrigued, filled with anticipation, and excitement as to where the heck this is going next. And I like it that way. For as long as this series has been around, it's been very consistent with the suspense. And even now, after Kingdom Hearts 3, I am very happy to see that it is still going strong with no signs of stopping. And from what I've heard, Square has planned well in advance the events to come, and they know what they are doing. And if that's true, all I can say to that is, by God's graces, keep on going, Nomura, you crazy madman. So with all that out of the way, how does this rhythm game actually play? I don't really have any point of comparison to really make here because believe it or not, I've never actually played any other rhythm game before now. I've seen Guitar Hero back in its prime and I do own one of the guitars, but I've never actually tried to play it myself. That being said, you are probably listening to the only Kingdom Hearts fan who actually did enjoy the Atlantica world in Kingdom Hearts 2. Cheesy as a couple of the new songs were, I actually did like the change of pace this minigame world brought. And dare I say it, it sort of trained me for what ended up being a whole game based on the concept of that world that nobody liked. When you get through the tutorial, you'll have a menu hub where you can select what mode you want to play. The story mode, however, is what you're going to have to focus on first to completion if you want to fully enjoy the other modes to follow. Each world you visit has usually one to two tracks from that realm and three optional star conditions the level challenges you to complete whilst playing it. Such challenges like not missing a single note or refraining from using any helpful items and so on. Before you begin a stage, you can change the difficulty to your liking, but if I'm being honest guys, if I were you, I would try to practice on proud mode every time. You see, depending on how many of those stars you collect while traveling the worlds, only by collecting enough of them will you unlock more worlds allowing you to progress further in the story. And should you collect all of them, you'll even unlock some bonus worlds. But here's the thing, by the latter half of the game, a lot of the stars are going to require you to do reasonably well on proud mode specifically just to qualify, which is why I stress that the earlier you start practicing the harder difficulties, the better you will be at the game overall. I was pretty lucky as this was the first mode that I decided to try, and I didn't want to move on to the next world until I felt comfortable with the playstyle on the harder difficulty. So I guess I kind of lucked out there. The gameplay during a stage is pretty simple. Sora, Donald, and Goofy, or whichever cast of characters you choose when you get the option to do so, will run along a musical chorus with enemy button prompts approaching to a synchronized beat of the music that's playing in the background. Most of the buttons, including the shoulder keys, will work as an attack, so you can adapt however you want. The real challenge comes from timing your button presses to the music itself. Now, you would think that if you are a fan of the soundtrack and know it well, then you'd be good to go. Well, you're half right. Knowing the music in advance certainly does help, but more often than not, the game likes to throw some cheap curveballs at you by having you play the baseline notes underneath the higher well-known beat you are so used to humming, which really easily threw my ass off a few times. So as you can imagine, the harder you make the difficulty, the more notes you'll have to try to hit. And by failing to hit a note, you're gonna take damage. 
take enough damage and you'll lose and have to start the stage over from the beginning until you complete it properly. Now, whenever you complete a stage, you're rewarded and ranked based on how well you did. In my experience, even on the hardest difficulty being proud mode, I found that I performed mm, pretty well. Rewards come in the form of experience points, money, and items you can take with you into a stage to act as a sort of buff. The items you can take with you are healing potions, experience point enhancers, or even bring King Mickey along to help you with some of the notes should they start to get a little rough on you. Guys, let me tell you, I went through this entire game in just a couple of sittings on the hard setting and not once used any of these items. The game obviously rewards you better for not using them, and some levels can definitely be more challenging than others, but even when I lost, I never thought it was necessary for me to resort to using the items to get me through a stage. To me, it was just a matter of practicing the song until I got it right, and it never took me too long before I finally was able to clear around and be satisfied with the overall score that I got. My aim while going through the game was that I didn't want to move on to the next world until I collected all of the stars for the world that I was on first. I didn't know in advance what the stars meant or anything, but it ended up being the right call as I found out later that certain worlds were going to be restricted until I had enough of them. And guys, I don't know if it's because I grew up with a musical family legacy and this sort of stuff just comes naturally to me, but I heard a lot of people were really having some serious trouble getting the hang of some of the challenges. I really don't know what to say about that. I, I'm definitely not tooting my own horn here. I'm certainly not the best at this game, I, I can assure you that much. And I can definitely acknowledge that some of these levels can be pretty damn demanding and very hectic. But I never at any point found them to be overly difficult, save for a couple of tracks that, as far as I know, are kind of optional. Certainly not enough to warrant me using a single healing item. Heck, the only reason I'm using them now is just to show you footage of what they do. George was watching me play this game for quite a while, and he can probably attest that I was pretty self-punishing as a player. Whenever I made a single error in a song or musical track, I would immediately pause the game and restart the stage from the beginning. Much to his annoyance and probable humor. Like, when it came to me, I just wasn't satisfied with myself if I didn't play a near-perfect or a perfect game. And it frustrated me every time I made a mistake. So much so that it made me wonder sometimes if the game itself was a little off with its hit detection. Because trust me, as a man who's grown up with music and has even edited a few musical tracks himself, I have a pretty good grasp on when I'm hitting a note on point the way I should. And when the game is telling me that I was barely off or missed entirely, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like it's more the game's fault than mine. Liar! That being said, there is actually an option where you can, in fact, tweak the synchronization yourself if you do feel the beat is off to you. So I'm guessing it may actually be possible that it can happen. So if you feel the need to, I would experiment with this. I know I did. I can't really give you a proper setting because given the model TV you could be using, the possible input lag from not playing in game mode, I'm sure there's a handful of variables that could throw off the beat just enough. So it really is up for you guys to decide. Save for those occasional moments, I do feel like eight times out of 10, the notes were on key and I was able to do a sufficient job. Yeah, to my surprise, the game can actually be pretty addicting. More so when you find that one song that you wanna perfect. As you get to the climactic bosses, the game will attempt to change up the gameplay on you a tad. You are still timing your buttons to the beats of the music, but in the background, you're gonna see your team engaging in a fight with one of the Xehanorts and depending on how well you do, will control the flow of the fight. To me, the hardest part is keeping your eyes on the notes of the song because what's going on in the background is so distracting because just look at it, you wanna watch the fight, but you gotta keep your concentration on the beats. Otherwise, you're gonna get punished severely and be putting the match at risk. You know, it reminds me of that boss fight in Metal Gear Solid 4 with that gecko swarm you know, where the screen splits up and you're playing a snake fighting off an army of mini Metal Gears, but you've got this awesome choreographed fight going on right next to you and you just wanna watch that, but you can't. Distractions aside, okay, during the boss fights, there's a moment where something interesting happens and even now I'm not quite sure how it works. Uh, the notes go away entirely and it feels like you have to time your dodge rolls while an attack is coming at you. There's no prompt or anything to trigger it, I just kind of push buttons and hope for the best. Thankfully, these aren't too difficult to complete, and if you replay them a few times, you should get the hang of it. 
With the money you obtain, you can spend it on materials so you can purchase some of those helpful items to use during the gameplay should you be struggling a bit. Or you can use it to buy perks for other game modes. Uh, speaking of which, the track selection really is what it sounds like. It's just a list of all of the songs that you've either played or unlocked as you've gone through the game, and you can play them from there. One added optional difficulty adjustment only for this mode, however, is the performance toggle. You see, by adjusting this, you can either make the stage even easier than it was on beginner mode, or you can pretty much ramp it up all the way to critical mode, making it more difficult than it would have been on proud by even adding more musical notes that you would have to hit with very specific buttons or even the analog stick. If you're looking for that insane balls busting no mercy challenge, this would be the way to do it. All it really does is add bonus points to your overall score, so it's nothing mandatory, thank God. But it is there if you want to push yourself to the limit. But hey, <laughs> I'm just telling you right now, guys, a brain can only process so much at once. That being said, I have actually pushed myself to try and get good at these adjustments too. And you know, while it's insane and it can be pretty frustrating, there's a side of me that does find it to be a little bit enjoyable when things actually go right. It's a nightmare, but it's an enjoyable one, I guess. Versus mode is an interesting beast. As it sounds, you can go online or locally to play with people in a versus match to see who can play a song better. Now, to make the matches more interesting, there is an option where you can have tricks appear on either player's screen to mess with them should you get enough points to trigger it. What these tricks can do is screw with you, making you think that you have to hit a note sooner than you have to, or it can be as diabolical as making the notes invisible altogether. Which to me, I think is the most cruel out of all of them. One thing I have noticed about the online players is that they do tend to like to go for the easy wins on unsuspecting players by getting really good at some of those arguably hardest tracks in the game, you know, like Wave of Darkness, for example, and playing it on repeat against people who naturally would have a tough time with it in hopes of scoring an easy rank up on points. <laughs> Sorry, Luna Lemons. Better luck next time. That being said, you can adjust the online difficulty to play however you want and play with the people with your specific uh, playstyle. So it is something that I would try to give a shot. It's surprisingly fun, except when you lose. So in conclusion, I was not surprised by the game that we got here, but at the same time, I still found it to be a pleasant game to play. It provided me as a fan with a good trip down memory lane with some story recaps here and there. It gave me some fun times to look forward to with the next installment for sure, but just as importantly, it helped make me appreciate the beautiful music the franchise has brought us all the more. Even if I did have to suffer through the Wonderland music several dozen times. But the biggest surprise of all with this game was that you could actually unlock musical tracks from other Disney movies that weren't even in the Kingdom Hearts games, like the Circle of Life from Lion King, and a whole new world from Agrabah, complete with the vocals. I'd share a snippet with you, but I'm pretty sure Disney would have my ass roasted on a spit before I even clicked the upload button. Trust me, you have no idea how hard it was to even record footage with this game, worrying about whether or not copyright claims were just gonna be hitting me from all sides because you know this channel and music. So to go back to my earlier question, was this game worth the full price? You know, to me personally, I think it was. I grew up with a musical history, so I already had a high appreciation for the composition that goes into movies and games. So that probably helped some. But I was already a loyal follower of Yoko Shimomura's work on the series and in a way grew up with these iconic tunes being a part of my youth and early adult life. So paying a full price for a game that allowed me to experience all that music firsthand to a degree and that allowed me to revisit some of those nostalgic memories through the melody, it was in fact worth it. With all that, the subtitle being Melody of Memory couldn't be more accurate in my case. Now, I understand and not everybody is gonna share that sentiment, and to that I can understand and probably suggest that if rhythm games aren't your cup of tea, then Melody of Memory really isn't gonna do anything special for you, nor change your mind. And I already said that even if you are a fan, Melody of Memory isn't exactly a required play, as the ending boss and cutscenes are the only mandatory viewing. 
which you could easily do with a single YouTube video. From my personal experience with this being my first rhythm-based game, I actually had an enjoyable time, and I think there's some enjoyment to be had all around, especially if you want to play online. There is local co-op, which is nice if you want to play a few rounds with a friend, but it really isn't all that special. Still, while I can't wholeheartedly recommend this game as a starter's course into the Kingdom Hearts series, the truth is, you could do worse. It does at least attempt to cover some of the major plot threads. So if nothing else, hopefully that would persuade a newcomer to go back and check the other games out. And I would say that if you don't want to pay full price for this kind of game, I can't blame you. I still think that down the line, if you can get it for a cheaper price, there's still plenty of delight to be had with this game's music and unique challenge. Ah, oh, what the hell, give it a shot. You may be surprised. I need to become stronger. And when I do, I'll be right there next to you and Sora. Well, there you guys have it. Those are my thoughts on Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. See? I told you it would make sense in the long run why I felt like I could review this game as a standalone and not feel the need to have to review every other game in the series just to get to it. However, that's still very much something that I plan to do in the future. And I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. I know I am. So, thank you guys once again for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think. It's always in a state of flux. And uh, we will see you next time in whatever the next review is. I have a pretty good idea. Oh, what's this over here? Ooh, Age of Calamity. Hey there, everyone. Did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff? Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming, such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters. Links provided below, so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit chat about the games that we love so much. Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us in any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.